Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. In today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about something that I've had so many of you ask me to talk about, and that is how to deal with the grief that one experiences when you have a breakup. So I'm going to use this little demonstration to show you, and I've used this demonstration before, but it's just excellent. A breakup does cause grief. It's Grief can come, as you know, from many sources. And when you've just had a breakup, it's so consuming. So let's say that this little rock represents the breakup. And when it first happens, it's all consuming. Look how this, I've just literally squashed it into this little tiny shot glass. And it's all consuming. There's no room. You can't, just can't see. It just like consumed you. Now, you feel like you're going to feel like that forever, but you, you won't because time does pass. So this well, could that state could be, you could feel like that for a week or so, maybe longer. But as the days go by, as you hit around about the 23-day mark, more or less, 21, 22, 23, something around we'll about the three weeks mark, you get a little bit more space around it. So it's the same breakup, but you're starting to get a little bit more space around this because of time. It's not that time heals, it's that time creates space. And when you have more space, you have better perspective. So you start seeing things differently. So then as time moves on, you eventually reach around about nine weeks and then you've got a lot more space. As you can see, there's a lot more space in the jar for the same grief, but it is now changing because it is, you've got more space around it. You can see things differently. So the, this never goes away, but it changes as time moves on. And sometimes you can be in the midst of this because grief is not linear. Sometimes you can be here. And then something happens that just reminds you of something and it can throw you back here again. But then to progress through back to here will be so much quicker the second time. And it's okay because that is how grief tends to work. And you could come back here or whatever. So that does happen. But initially, as, it's, as you start getting through a breakup, you need, you, this is the kind of phasing that you'll go through. Now, grief is an experience with all the details, which are memories, and they have become part of a network inside your mind-brain-body connection. So it's part of you. So we have to rewire the network. You can't change it. What's happened to you, it's always going to be there, but you're going to change what it looks like in terms of getting more space, more perspective, et cetera, over time. And that works in cycles of around about nine weeks, which is around about 63 days. Okay, so that's why I gave you this example. Now, when you're initially in the first phase, it's, it's the hardest. And so I'm going to give you some, some tips to help you get through this. I'm going to give you six tips on how to deal with the breakup, bearing in mind You've got this little demonstration. Okay, so the first thing is allow yourself to grieve. It's amazing how many people kind of try to stop that grieving. You can't stop it because it's an experience. It's volcanic in nature. It's wired into the mind-brain-body network. It's these protein structures that vibrate. They look like trees. They've got a root system. They've got branches. They are effect affecting how you show up. They're in every part of your body. It's part of you. It's embodied. That experience is real. So allowing yourself to grieve helps to bring that experience from the non-conscious mind into the conscious mind where you can become empowered to start the reconceptualization process. In other words, deconstructing and reconstructing to try and just come to peace with it and to try and help yourself move forward. Okay, bearing in mind that you've got this at least 63-day cycle, if not more, depending on how complex and how intertwined the, and deep the relationship was and how long, et cetera, it went on for. Obviously, the longer, the more complex, the more of those cycles that you will go through. Okay, so allow yourself to grieve. Now, what is the timing around allowing yourself to grieve? It's I recommend that when you're in this initial state, that you give yourself, when you feel the grief and welling up, give yourself around about 7 to 15 minutes, 5 to 15 minutes in that region. Try not to go longer because it's very draining, can consume you, and then it's difficult to progress through the rest of the day. Now, you're not ignoring it, but you're going to, you, go, you allow yourself, but there's a limited time, and then you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to work on that tomorrow. Now, I'm going to tell you how to transition in a moment. You're going to serve around about 7 to 15 minutes, or 5 to 15 minutes when it's in the first three weeks. From the second three weeks to the, to the six-week mark, which is somewhere in between here, you can try and shorten it to maybe around about 5 to 10 minutes. Then once you hit the nine-week mark, try and keep the grieving periods down to around about five minutes. So these are little blocks of time that you allocate and give yourself permission on a daily basis. It doesn't mean that you won't have little bursts of the grieving during the course of the day, but then you're going to have a little transition exercise to help you, once you've done the little grieving exercise, 
tra- a transition exercise to help you transition into the day. And a transition exercise could be doing or thinking of something that's really something that is you, that you enjoy. Like if I think of my granddaughter that was born on the 25th of August, which 24th of August at, 5, at 12.30 in the morning, which is today, I'm recording this podcast today. So I'm in a very happy state, even though I may look calm, I want to jump all over the place and with joy. But this is a very joyful thing. So it's a, it's a great example of a transition. So if I'm grieving something, all I have to do is a little active reach that I can do to transition me is to then picture that my little granddaughter Daphne's face and the moment, the first moment I saw her would be a great example of an anchoring transition from focusing on the grief for the fixed period of time into then transitioning over so I can then get through the day. And then I can hang on to that little little transition exercise as I go through the day. When If the grief starts hitting me, I can then train myself to get back to that transition exercise, focus on whatever it may be, and then telling myself I can work on the grief again tomorrow. Sometimes you may need initially to have a couple of periods of grief during the course of the day, but always try and limit the time and get you know, try and get it down to, to one period in a day. But you know, don't be hard on yourself. It, it, when you're in this part of the grieving, it's really hard to just you know, make it happen super quickly. Okay, so I'm just giving you some guidelines to help you. Transition activities could be other things, like you can do things like exercise or a little meditation activity or reading your favorite book or if you're reading a great book series or a little hobby or spending some time in nature or you know working on you know maybe baking something and that sort of thing so it's doing some kind of little transition exercise which could be a statement of thought or something more involved to help you transition so then the third tip is to when you are in the state where you're allowing yourself to grieve Be quite organized with how you allow allow yourself to grieve. So the third tip is then as you start the grieving process, describe the emotion in a sentence or the emotions. So I feel sadness because I feel frustration because. So give yourself little sentences. And then as you say, I feel sadness because and give the reason, then where do you feel it in your body? I feel sadness because of the fact that I'm just missing having that connection with that person. And I'm feeling the shockwave going through my, my body that's making me feel nauseous. So, and, and say that, okay? And then the fourth tip, write that down, okay? So you allow yourself to grieve. Have your little transition exercise number two. When you're in the grieving process, connect your emotional state with a little sentence to the physical inside of your body and then write that down. When you write it down, write this down in a way that's like, get, have a, journal or something. We have journals on our site if you want to go and have a look and order from there, but you can use any journal and you're going to write down all over the page. Try not write in sentences. Try and just put thoughts all over the page and draw pictures and arrows and colors and that makes you get a deeper level of insight, weakens the network even more so that you can start reconstructing it and getting it to a point where you can reconceptualize. In other words, you're getting, you're going to start getting words inside of you and little phrases and statements that are basically wiring in in replacement of the total negative experience that are going to then help you move forward in a more peaceful way. Okay, so you're not eliminating, you can't eliminate, you're reconstructing, okay? Reconceptualizing. Then the fifth thing is to reach out for support. Don't do this alone. When you do these grieving periods, especially when you're starting, it's really great to talk to someone as we all know. We need deep, meaningful connection. And sometimes when we're in this state over here, We can really feel so consumed that we can't see straight. We can't see perspective. We don't have perspective and we can get into a really bad place. So it's a good idea to just phone up a friend, text someone, get on Zoom, meet them for coffee and just talk about what you're grieving about. Just tell them how you've grieved for five minutes and these are your emotions and it's what you're feeling. Just talk it through and let them then listen and ask them for some perspective and just to see their point of view and just someone listening to you as we know it helps so much when we hear our story okay so 63 days this is the all consuming one as time goes on within about three weeks we're going to feel more space we'll feel better within about nine weeks we'll have a lot more space we'll feel a lot better and when we in this state allow your first tip allow yourself to grieve for around five to 15 minutes when you in, in the initial week or so by week three, we're going to reduce it down to about two periods of about five minutes. By the time we get to, yeah, around, this is five to 15, around about five minutes. And over, by the time we get to day 63, sort of a couple of minutes at a time. 
And that when you're allowing yourself to grieve, remember to, remember to connect your emotions with your sensation in your body. Remember to have a transition, some sort of transition thing. Like I gave the example of me thinking of my little granddaughter, Daphne, and then make sure that you are getting the support and write down. Okay, so those are the five tips to help you deal with the grief of a breakup. There's a lot of others, but these are very effective, very scientific, and will really help you move forward into the next stage. And if you haven't yet got my new book, How to Help Your Child Clean Up Their Mental Mess, this is helping you help your child with their mental health. Imagine having the mental skills to be able to process what you're going through, uh, emotions from the experiences of life that can be so overwhelming that you just, that you just feel like you don't, you don't know how to cope. So many adults that I work with in my practice and so many adults I talk to now will say, I just wish I had those mental skills. I wish I just knew how to talk about what I was going through. Well, this book will help you help your child, whether you're a parent, grandparent, teacher. This is how to help your two to 10 year old manage their mental health. And there's a little brainy character in the book. We've even got a brainy plush toy. This, um, and brainy is your, the superhero that walks the mental health journey with you and your child. Children relate really well to toys, so do adults. And this helps you like to say, for example, you know, brainy's feeling very sad today. I wonder why brainy's feeling very sad. So it's a great connection point for you to help your child talk about their mental skills along with the guidance in the book. We even have a coloring book where you can have all different scenarios that you can create. You can, your child can then point to the scenario and color it in and there's a blank page to talk about that. These are all available on our website, drleaf.com. And also, if you have an older child, you can use Cleaning Up the Mental Mess along with this book. And I have the NeuroCycle app, which I walk you through, literally giving you therapy. This book, by the way, is great for inner child work as well. So if you're an adult, we're finding a lot of adults finding this very, very helpful to go and do that inner child work and to literally speak to your younger self and help your younger self process through what they went through and give them the mental skills your younger self to actually transition into we into a healthier state in adulthood. Well, thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you next time.